Speaking of Monarch, let's start there. So how does somebody, how did somebody who never marched indoor, you never did, right? No, I did not. Never marched indoor end up being like a founding staff member of a very successful independent world indoor group. Like how did, how did Monarch come about? Like, did you just get a phone call? Was it your idea? Did I mean, what, cause indoors uh, to my knowledge, at least indoor is not really a big thing in Texas. I think it's growing, right. but Monarch has right. been around for what? Like five years now, four years. Correct. Five years. So I always, I mean, it makes perfect sense that a highly competitive world group could come out of Texas because band is so big and, just seems like a no brainer. Once you guys came out and I saw the first videos the first year and I was like, Oh, this is actually solid considering they're just starting. And right. it made perfect sense just because of the band environment of Texas. So how did, how did that all come about? And we'll just go from there. Yeah. Um, well actually, so I moved back to Houston. Um, and in 2014, there was one of my friends, Emily Whaley. She uh, hit me up and asked me, like, hey, you know, there's this independent group called Lone Star Independent out of Houston, and she was helping with that, and they needed help. Like, they needed a snare, a quad tech, a battery person, because um, there was currently, like, two people on their staff. Um, so I ended up helping out, and, you know, I thought I was just going to help with an audition. Um, ended up running the whole thing through the season as, like, battery and visual. Uh, <laughs> they, they actually ended up, we went to Dayton and I, I literally had no idea. Like I never did indoor, never went to WGI. I, all I knew about was like videos and talking to you guys at, over the summer about what it is. Um, we won independent A class. So I didn't really know what that meant, but I know we like got a gold medal. I was like, Hey, that's cool. Like I like this indoor thing, you know, um, winning is fun. Yeah. And, uh, and then unfortunately like most Texas groups in 2015, the group folded, um, just, wasn't able to you know sustain and i got a call from another friend um zach harston who was i guess monarch was becoming a thing like there was an idea it wasn't really formed and he asked me to come come like be part of the staff and so it was created by um a couple of people like there was rob sullins kyle Wynn, chris king like a couple of people in houston got together you know decided like like you said, Texas and Houston, we need like a group that is sustainable. That's an outlet for people. That's an educational resource. Um, and they, they formed it, they formed the group, they got it up and running and then they built a staff and, um, you know, Eric Reidenauer was supposed to be the music caption head that year. And he, he actually interviewed me, he hired me on staff. Um, and I got there and again, I think just because of a series of events, um, most of the people that were hired on staff were unable to do it. So it actually ended up being myself, um, Emily Whaley, and one more person again, where it just, when you fall into that position, um, and I had recruited most of the kids, like I was like, if I'm going to teach this thing, I'm going to recruit my own kids. So I reached out to all these people I knew about, like, you know, kind of what would be considered talent down in, in Texas and, uh, reached out to them, kind of told them about the thing. The first year was kind of easy because the dues were only $900. Um, so we, you know, <laughs> that's we, nice. Yeah, we were able to like market it that way. And when that happened, um, we, we had a five year plan. Like when, you know, all the staff bailed, they actually like the director pulled me in and kind of said like, Hey, like, you know, can you take over? Can you run the thing? And it's like, sure. And there was a five year plan of being a class for five years, kind of establishing a foundation, um, allowing the thing to grow naturally and, and kind of organically and then going to open class and then when we're ready making the plunge to world um the group actually got bumped the first year before the first show um so i guess that was a, a doing of it was wgi kind of reached out and said like we we posted like a like you said like a video of like our audition camp or something like that and, and things like that and they're like hey like just to be smart you should probably not go a class and um is this 15 it was yeah 2015 and uh so we went open class that year and then the next year 16 we were flagged to get bumped to world um, mid-season um and then so 17 it was basically like the director had a meeting with me and was like look like i know you don't think we're ready but we're gonna need to jump to world because if we want the designers to design a world-class show if we want to keep pushing and you know 
pushing the boundaries of what we can do as a group, then we're going to need to go well. So we took the plunge in that summer and it's ended up being, being good so far, you know, like kind Heck of, just yeah. I'll say, to... where'd you all finish this year? Uh, we were seventh this yeah, year. I mean, what's your, it's your fourth or fifth year, fifth year, uh, fifth That's... year total third, third year in world class. So considering the initial plan when the group started was to be a class for five years. And that after, after those five years, you all got seventh in world. Uh, I think right. you guys are doing something right. Um, it's It's been a fun. So I think the thing that has allowed us to get to that spot, um, obviously the, the the staff around us is, is great. Like I, I'm humbled every single day that literally we're, we're, you know, working with people that run their own groups. They're, they're all part of like drum corps staffs. They're doing great things. Um, but I think the biggest thing is we – the admin has been incredible. They they kind of sit me down every year and we just we literally talk about what we need to improve. Like not looking at any other groups, not looking at the activity, just what we as an organization, what Monarch needs to improve to make us work better and operate more efficiently. So I think it's it's good that we're constantly like putting the microscope on ourselves as an organization and we've decided to split the admin and the instructional side of things, which in my opinion is, is extremely beneficial because the teachers get to teach and the admin get to do all the logistics and business and not having to delve, you know, or, or put your hand in both, both of those things allows everyone to focus on what they're like there to do. You know? Yeah, for sure. The setup that you're describing is the most efficient way to optimize uh, everybody's output and what they're able to bring to the table. Just there were several times this winter when I was teaching, it was my first year at CAP teaching the snare drums. And I would be like, Hey, do we need to like tell the members like this, this, and this? And they'd be like, no, nah, admin takes care of that. And I'm like, great. Like that just right. takes kids aren't coming to me asking like, Hey, where are the showers this weekend? I'm like, no, they, somebody else is figuring that out. I don't have to worry about it. Um, and I think that sort of mindset of self assessing is the way people get better and grow each year you're worried about being great and the results or doing well are a product of trying to just make yourself better other than just trying to chase a placement 